So, so we're the, we're here with Sean Alexander. Uh, hey. <laughs> so I guess you're Sean. I, I I should ask you who are you, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, Sean Alexander. I'm a senior program manager on uh, the Windows team. Very cool. And we're here with a few other uh, guests. And who are you? I'm Nampton. I'm here from Hong Kong. I'm actually responsible for the IT Pro communities in Hong Kong. Wow. And you're going to just be filming and uh, yeah, purchasing filming. Yeah, I'll be filming. You filming. <laughs> That'll be fun. <laughs> Can't wait to see that video. <laughs> and uh, who are you? I'm David Strange. I'm a group program manager in Windows. Okay, cool. And, uh, and you've been on Channel News. <laughs> I so. have, I know. <laughs> I am uh, Asana Zahari, and I'm the program manager for Start.com. Start.com rocks. So. Oh, thank you. And uh, what are we here to see? Are you gadgets. Gadgets. Oh, yeah, there we go. Everything gadgets. <laughs> so, well, at least two of the three things gadgets. So we're, uh, we're we're talking about uh, web gadgets and desktop gadgets, and uh, as you know, at PDC uh, it was a big unveiling of Windows Sidebar as as a feature in Windows Vista. So we wanted to give you kind of a sneak preview. It's a thing on the sidebar, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> sort of like, like there. Yeah. 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 And now, do you need the sidebar to run gadgets? Uh, is this well, Sidebar is actually a feature that's going to be available in Windows Vista, and we're okay. also going to make uh, gadgets uh, for the desktop available down level. Uh, mm -hmm. So people will, on Windows XP specifically will also be able to run gadgets uh, for the desktop. Uh, and then you know, anybody with a uh, with web browser, uh, of course we prefer i7, uh, can go ahead and run gadgets on uh, star.com today. Wait a second. There's gadgets already out there? Yep, web gadgets I thought this today. was all stuff that's already coming, like, you know, <laughs> in the future. Yeah, well, you know, that's, that's kind of the cool thing about, uh, about our gadget platform. Uh, okay. that's, you know, there's, there's been a lot of work done in kind of the concept of mini applications. Uh, you know, Apple, Confabulator, uh, you know, our friends at Stardock have, have all you know, had their own interpretations of what you know, a, a mini application is. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I think really sets us apart is the fact that we're taking a, an approach which blends both web-based gadgets, uh, gadgets that you have on sites like Star.com, uh, as well as, as desktop gadgets uh, that will run inside of Windows Sidebar. Okay. Uh, so it makes it really easy for you to maybe have like a weather gadget on your star.com homepage. Well, you might want to pin that directly to your sidebar and have it available for you, you know, anytime, maybe even when the browser's not up. Uh, so we're going to enable you to go ahead and do that. Now, uh, this stuff was shown at the PDC on the big screens, right? Can you just give us a little uh, demo so I... I I get refreshed again what you're talking about with Windows Vista? Sure. Yeah, let's uh, go ahead and take a look. Um, and we'll ask, we'll ask a stupid question. <laughs> <on there>. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so uh, what we have here is basically a, you know, a, a widescreen uh, laptop. Uh, in fact, one of the interesting things that we found is that uh, most business and consumer laptops are going widescreen yep. uh, within the next uh, 18 to 24 months. Uh, so the uh, consumer market's about uh, two-thirds there right now. Uh, but the neat thing is, is that that addresses the main uh, complaint that people had about the original Windows sidebar. So as you can see, we've designed uh, the new sidebar to only take up that additional screen real estate uh, that you might have um, you know, on a widescreen monitor. So I, I can do things like I can go ahead and open up a browser window. Uh, here you see I can get you know, the full MSN homepage. Uh, I can even resize it, but I still have plenty of screen real estate uh, with, with my sidebar uh, gadgets running on the side. Right. Um, the other thing that you'll notice here is, is that because sidebar uh, is a host for many applications, if I maximize my window, uh, it goes ahead and overlaps or z-orders above uh, the sidebar. Okay. But the sidebar offers a, a number can, of... Can I pin the sidebar to be on the top always? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. you can do that. In fact, we'll, uh, we'll take this, this uh, curved bar that you see and we'll snap it straight so that it bumps up right against, uh, against your window that cool. you have. Now, and, and I noticed this, the sidebar is transparent as well. That's well, right. As, yeah. As some opacity. If I actually made it on top, would I see through it to the, like, to the web page that I have there? Uh, yes, actually, that that'll work fine because uh, okay. we have, we support opacity uh, inside of uh, of the glass, so that that's, uh, that definitely works. Very cool. But uh, you know, we have a, a couple of examples here. I have uh, you know just a traditional you know clock gadget. Um, I have an email gadget. Okay. Uh, you'll notice if I mouse over on it, um, it's actually talking to Outlook just using the Outlook object model. Uh, it tells me you know, a quick stat on my emails, um, and this is one we actually just wrote for fun. Um, this is actually a security dialogue yep. you know, for for Outlook. But you'll notice that if I uh, if I click on it now I get a flyout that'll show me um, you know e emails categorized by order of importance, uh, flagged emails for follow up, and then unread emails. And then I can go ahead and customize this at any point. You know, if I click on any one of these, it'll go ahead and open up Outlook. But you know one of the kind of the, the cool things about gadgets is 
Um, sidebar is, is a place on the desktop that you can go ahead and pin your gadgets, or you can go ahead and drag them, drop, drop them off onto the desktop. Um, so here you can see I have a, an RSS gadget uh, loaded here as well. Uh, if I want, I can go ahead and drag and drop that right on, on the sidebar here. Okay. Or, you know, same thing with. Uh, uh, with, with the uh, slideshow player. Now, I could drag all my gadgets off the sidebar and then could I delete the sidebar? Uh, oh, sure. Uh, in fact, we have a feature uh, in the sidebar settings uh, where if you go ahead and uh, click on it, you can go ahead and uh, set it to um, uh, to remove all gadgets. It'll hide the, uh, uh, hide the sidebar and all your gadgets will be floating on the desktop. Uh, we'll also support multi-mod uh, environments oh. and you, you can dock it on either the right-hand side or the left-hand side of your desktop. And can I put it on the second monitor? Yep. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yep. So yeah, it works. If I have five monitors, like they have at Reuters, <laughs> I can pick which monitor I dock the sidebar on. <laughs> That's a good point. Or the, the panorama, right? The three yeah. screens. Yeah. yeah. That, that that would be cool. Cool. Yeah. So we're definitely gonna going to support those. That's my goal. That's when I know I've arrived when I have five monitors. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the way that you go ahead and pick gadgets is through the gadget picker. Okay. Um, so I can click here, uh, and you notice that we're uh, working right now on on the gadget picker. I have uh, a couple of, of other items here. I have uh, internet search. Um, you know, here you saw my RSS gadget uh, that I loaded. Uh, and here's one that we, uh, we did for fun uh, called uh, Windows Media Player. Well, it basically just uses the Windows Media Player control, okay. um, uh, the, uh, the scriptable com object. Um, and because gadgets are really just made up of uh, DHTML uh, plus script, uh, or you can use uh, Avalon or, or uh, Windows Presentation Foundation to go ahead and build them. Okay. Um, you're just using script behind it to go ahead and automate it. So in this particular case, uh, what we did was we built it. Uh, using our platform and uh, JScript. So what this allows to do is uh, you know, some pretty neat things. Now you just double clicked on that to add it. Are you going to be able to drag it right out and dock it on the sidebar out of that me menu? Or? We're, we're taking a look at it right now. Um, okay. I would say that the, the gadget picker that you see right now is, is uh, an early form of that, uh, something that, uh, that we're continuing to develop and take feedback on. Uh, in fact, that's one of the things I really want to encourage people to do is you know, visit our website at, at uh, microsoftgadgets.com right. and uh, you know, give us feedback on the video. We'll, we'll go ahead and post it there and tell us what you like, what you don't like about what you're seeing. Now, you mentioned there were two types of, or were there two types of gadgets or three types of gadgets? Well, technically, there's three types. Um, okay. There's, there's uh, web gadgets, uh, which are built uh, in, in Sonos. And Sonos is going to show us that. some of those, right? Um, and then there's, there's desktop gadgets, uh, okay. which, which we showed, uh, <clears throat> or sidebar gadgets, which, which we're showing here. Uh, the third type is, is actually a, a custom type designed for devices. So you have web, desktop, and devices. Uh, for devices, it, you, you build that using Sideshow. Uh, okay. which is the new auxiliary info display. So the idea there ah. is that on the front of the yep. display... We we'll interviewed that team. Yeah. So. Yeah. so what we're doing right now is, is the platforms are different right now, uh, but it's something that we're looking at uh, for the future is making it easier for uh, developers to, buy, to, to build one gadget that's able to target all three platforms Got uh, it. seamlessly. Got it. And right now the drag and drop works between the sidebar and the desktop. It doesn't work with other... Uh, devices, right? I couldn't drag a gadget over to my smartphone or something like that. Right? Uh, not right now, but that's uh, that's definitely an interesting idea. Okay. <laughs> I hope I don't ruin the patent for that one. <laughs> oh, so, so let's uh, let's take a quick look at the, at, uh, the media player gadget because I I, th I really think this is one of the one of the coolest ones. Um, so here you notice I can go ahead and, and open up what we call uh, in the blade. Uh, we're actually borrowing that liberally from the Xbox team. Um, the idea being that I can go ahead and open up this drawer and, and uh, you know, go ahead and play back some music, you know, whatever I want to do. Um, so one of the things that, that we did here was I can go in, um, you know, select any, any music, let's say you know, I want a little, a little Jimi Hendrix, um, you know, select a song, drag and drop it uh, in here. And, you know, so I get the album art, uh, the music will start playing, yep. and uh, you know, I can even turn off the display if, if I want to have just a, a really clean look. Right. Um, but you know, we wanted to do a little bit more with the gadget, uh, so we said, well, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be cool if it, we kind of had a, like a, a little game built into it as well? Um, so what we did was we uh, um, uh, worked with our, our partner to go ahead and build this this cool game in called Guess That Song. Uh, right. Should sound familiar to many people. Yeah. Uh, but the idea here is, you, if you have a five minute break, you know, between meetings, uh, why not just you know play a quick game and, and get in touch with music out of your mu music library? Um, yeah. So here, what we're doing is. Uh, just using the media library uh, that's built into Windows Media Player. Uh, again, just, just making uh, uh, JavaScript calls directly into, into their object model. Um, and music's playing. I can go ahead and select and, and play uh, you know, Name That Song.
Very cool. So that gives a hint of some of the gadgets that people could build, right? Games. I, I could see a little Tetris gadget that you might be able to interact with. Could you build yeah. a rich gadget, gadget that has that kind of interactivity that would hang out on the sidebar? Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because, again, you can use anything from DHTML, so we're going to target a, a wa broad range of developers, uh, mm -hmm. all the way up to Windows Presentation Foundation, uh, with which you, know, you get to use all, uh, expression and you know, all sorts of great tool support, but you're also going to get vector-based graphics uh, on top of that platform. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, David, uh, do you, do you want to show them you know, some of the, the examples in Windows presentation? Sure, I can show a quick demo of that. Okay. okay. While he's uh, getting set up, can you, um, how do I find gadgets? Now, some, sure. some will come with Windows Vista, I'm, I'm sure, right? Yep. yep and, so. and then how do I find more gadgets? So right now... I'm going to be a gadget <laughs> team. I'm going to go for the biggest <laughs> collection in the world of Windows yeah. gadgets. <laughs> well, we, Actually, uh, Chris Perillo is going to win that title. I know it. <laughs> <No kidding. Yeah. laughs> I was actually talking to Chris just today about it. So, uh, yeah, we expect that people may get up in, into, the, into the hundreds of gadgets in the collection. Um, so we want to make it easy for you to be able to manage them, uh, but also find them. So uh, right now we have a, a developer-focused site at uh, microsoftgadgets.com. Okay. Um, right now, as I mentioned before, um, the current build is not available in the PDC build of Windows Vista, uh, okay. but around Beta 2, uh, we are going to be making uh, bits available so the developers can start uh, start playing with that. Uh, and if we can get it out earlier, we, we certainly will. Um, but what I would do is, is say just go to to MicrosoftGadgets.com and uh, you know check in there. We got a blog and RSS feed, and you know, of course we have an RSS feed. <laughs> and, uh, you know, well, you have an RSS <laughs> gadget. You have, have to have some content for that RSS gadget, right? Yeah, exactly. Awesome. So uh, so just uh, visit the site. Yeah. Very cool. Are, well, is there going to be a business model? So if I'm a developer, can I make a really really killer gadget that I could sell for five bucks, say, and share some revenue with Microsoft and uh, get in? Yeah, uh, you, well, you, here's the thing. We think that most gadgets are going to be made available for free. Um, okay. they're, they're pretty easy to, to develop, and we're think, we think they're going to be traded like playing cards, as, as uh, one of our PMs says. Um, so from that perspective, we think it's going to be a great complement to full-fledged applications. So you may, right. may have like a, an application suite and actually have a series of gadgets that you know, provide you with instant you know, access to information, which is contextual to that application. Um, but we also do expect that there are going to be some, some developers who are interested in, in monetizing and actually building gadgets and, and uh, either doing shareware or actually charging for them. Uh, we met a couple at, at PVC. Um, you know, David actually gave a presentation uh, with, with uh, Bubba Mararka on our team. Uh, we had an overflow room for our overflow room. Uh, there's so much interest in, in gadgets. So we, we think there's plenty of space here for, for all, all sorts to play. Right. And you're not limited to the kind of uh, code you can write on the gadgets, right? You know, you're not limiting me to a sandbox or anything like that. I can put Quake, I could put Quake in as a gadget, right? Or I could do Flight Simulator as a gadget, right? Uh, do I, in other words, do I have full access to the Windows API in my gadget? Uh, programmatically, uh, you'll be able to go ahead and access uh, scriptable comma objects, ActiveX controls. You'll be able to go ahead and, and anything you do in WPF, uh, you'll be able to also do inside of Sidebar. Okay. Now, the key thing to keep in mind, though, so is So I that could have four little videos inside my gadget? Yeah, potentially, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the traffic cam seems to be the popular one among, among members of the team. But yeah. um, the key thing to remember in terms of security is that um, we're spending... In, a significant amount of time on that space right now. It's one of the reasons that we're holding off on, on actually releasing the platform so that we can go ahead and spend even more time uh, developing it so the developers don't have to rebuild their, their gadgets. Mm -hmm. But you should expect that they're going to operate in a low rights environment similar to, to IE7. Um, you know, you'll, the user will have to explicitly acknowledge uh, permission uh, when they install a gadget. You know, note, Basically, the gadget will notify the user here. I need to talk to the internet. I need to talk to the file system. You know, we'll, we'll do it in, in a user-friendly way, but right. they'll have to acknowledge that and then go ahead and explicitly accept that that gadget will be allowed to run on their system. Very cool. All right. So you got yeah. some really cool gadgets to show us. Absolutely. Well, what I wanted to show you is talk a little bit about WPF. Okay. So there's a lot of, of benefits to WPF. One of the biggest. And this is the technology formerly known as Avalon. Avalon right? Exactly. Right. One of the things that I'm really excited about is how it separates the presentation tier from the business logic tier. So you can continue to use Visual Studio and write all your app logic. But when you're thinking about gadgets, they're very targeted, you know, single purpose mini applications. And so I don't think the challenge is really writing the, you know, the CS code behind to, to control the behavior of the gadget. Really, I think the focus is on how do you 
really use the, the, the limited real estate that you have here? Yeah. Um, and how do you do really cool interaction models with, with the user? And so it's, it's really the focus. I think the challenge is on the presentation tier. And, and with WPF, they've really separated that. And there's all kinds of tools um, that are going to be available to design the presentation tier. It'll be separate from Visual Studio. And so, okay, so why don't we go ahead and load a simple XAML page. So again, this is written completely in XAML. And it's just basically a vector-based image. Um, with some cool little animations. But again, you can see how you can really make eye-popping graphics and it's pretty simple. Just to show you how simple you know this code is, we can go ahead and take a look at it. Okay. Let's drag that to Notepad, take a look. So again, you can see this is a simple page object. It has a view box and grid and simple animated um, vector-based This probably was done in the clock. Sparkle tool, huh? Could be done in a Sparkle tool or a number of other tools that are going to be popping up that allow you to easily author and generate and Actually, a lot of this is just generated code, um, yeah. XAML. So, but the question on everybody's mind then is, well, okay, cool, I've got this little XAML page. How do I repurpose this into a gadget? And the answer is it's really, really simple. Okay. We essentially have a new class. How do you do it? <laughs> oh, all you do, well, there's, a, there's a few steps. So you just okay. replace this page as your root element. You replace it with a gadget window, okay. uh, which is our gadget class. And so I'm just going to do that. So close the gadget class. Gadget window. Yep. And then you recompile your XAML. <clears throat> okay. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to do that. And then once you've recompiled um, the XAML page as a gadget, all you have to do is create uh, a gadget package. Okay. And that's really simple. We support a number of, of formats. So we install gadgets into a gadget directory. So I'm just going to go ahead into my into my gadget directory. And you see the other gadgets that were there that showed up in the gadget picker. And I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to create a new uh, compressed folder. We support zip, cab files, or just, just plain directories. So the bar is really low for you know your iterative development process. You can just right. put, throw everything into a directory, iterate through it. And then when you go to, to um, ship it, you can put it in a zip file with a .gadget extension. Or if you want to sign it um, to increase the probability that somebody's going to give you trust, you could put it into a cab file and digitally sign it. So we're just going to call this clock. And I showed you this this um, XAML page. So we're just going to pop that in there. You just dragged it right into the zip I file. I just dragged it into the zip file. Yep. Um, the other thing that we're going to create is um, created an icon. Basically, it's a PNG that's just going to represent this gadget in the gadget picker. Yep. I'm going to drag that in. And then the only other thing I need to do is author a gadget XML file, which is a very simple, think of it as a, as a manifest. And in this manifest, we define the, the gadget type, which in this case is WPF. It could easily be a DHTML gadget. Um, or in the future, we'll support this uh, Windows Presentation Foundation Everywhere um, markup, yeah. which is a XAML subset. Very cool. Um, you define things <coughs> like, again, the, here's the icon that I, I created, this clock PNG. Um, a path to the actual XE that I compiled, and then I, I set up my version versioning information, um, and then we'll also set up my my security. In this case, we're running um, WPF in full trust trust mode. Okay. Um, and do you guys have uh, samples of of these or uh, templates that we can download and start with, or do we have to sort of watch well, this video and hand do it? Back no, no, of course not. Once, <laughs> once we make the bits available and we put them up. Um, on the site, there's going to be lots and lots of documentation that give you sample code. Um, we're eventually going to have best practices and things up there as well. So, cool. <laughs> um, so once, uh, so now when I associate the gadget picker, you see this this new clock here, and when I double click on that, then it actually launches. Um, so this is a WPF gadget now, and I put in some other CS in there too, so it wasn't just animating with the hand spinning. Uh, it's actually actually telling time, um, but I've also just to show you kind of some of the cool things you can do with graphics here in, in WPF. Um, okay, this one's misbehaving a little bit. Uh, it was just showing you again some <laughs> of the cool 3D animations you can do, and you can do things like hey, it's early days. All kinds yeah. of reflections. Yeah. Um, but again, the, the whole point with that one, here, you should be able to put videos in there and you, stuff. Oh, you can do just about anything. And it's now, just amazing, like very powerful. There are some caveats, right? Because it, if you do some things that keep the processor busy, you're going to wear out battery life, Sure. Right? Well, you know, a number of things. Like, some of this is just to show conceptually what you can do. When it actually comes to building gadgets, you're probably going to want to minimize things, like the number and the amount of animations. You don't probably want to do consistent 
animations constantly or you know clock the CPU or take up more memory. So we even do things um, like in our clock gadget. Um, by default, we don't display a second hand. Just again, so we can really optimize, or minim I should say, minimize the impact to to the user system. Right. Is it gonna? Is there a power API that you can call into to see if the machine is on battery power, and then can you build two states? Well, we're still defining our, our, our system. I just system object, our system and there, object model, but yeah. um, you could also get at things through like Windows WMI. Um, okay. uh, by writing a little bit of code, and we're we'll also just, just smart... interviewed the mobile team, and they're really uh, freaked out about uh, performance on battery life because if you keep things running on a screen, sure. it hurts your battery life. Sure. And, uh, having that kind of ability to absolutely have developers think about that absolutely, and we'll, we'll also allow you to handle events, so you'll know if a gadget's hidden, for example. So if you fill up the if you're if you're choosing to use a sidebar and you fill it up, they'll we'll, uh, some of the gadgets will move to an overflow mode, and so what you can do is handle the fact that that those those gadgets are hidden and thus like limit your maybe if if it's a service based um, gadget you're going to want to limit your calls to the web etc so lots of exciting things to come very cool so what else is up here web gadgets web, web. how do you get started today so Sonos uh, is here I'll to show us <laughs> What's that? I get started today <laughs> So we've got we've seen a Win32 uh, gadget and we've seen a WPF mm -hmm. gadget. So the, these are DHTML gadgets, yes. or yes. Oh, wow. So uh, these are web gadgets. Now, do you have to be uh, Scott Isaacs to understand how to code <laughs> these things? Or? You know, actually, that's the beauty of it. You don't. Okay. Um, you can write a gadget in as little as like we had this guy write a gadget in 30 minutes. All you need to know is DHTML and JavaScript. It's just basically the standards that have been around for a long time and now we're just making it really easy to plug into our, our framework. Very cool. Um, but yeah, to give you some background, Scott is basically the guru behind our framework, and yeah. I know you did a really awesome video with yeah, him. Yeah, so. we have a video up so you can uh, meet him and see how how you guys built the uh, framework on exactly. start.com. Exactly. Basically what helps us be so agile and ship every week is, is his framework, so <laughs> it helps us a lot. Um, so I'm going to give you a little demo of what you can do with web gadgets today. Um, as we announced it at PDC, and basically what you can do today is you can go to start.com slash PDC or actually start.com slash developer where you get all the goods and the details about what do I need to build a gadget. And you really don't need much. Um, and, you know, we're, we're gearing developers that are really advanced or just simple web developers or you don't really even have to be a developer. Like we had one of our product managers wrote a, a gadget that was demoed at the company meeting. So it's really the broad range that we're aiming for. And basically um, you can go to start.com, you can build your own gadget and you can host it yourself. And what you do is you basically uh, come to our PDC version. We don't have it on the main start.com site yet. Okay. Um, actually, I was going to show. You can have either a very light version of start with nothing at all if you don't only want a search box, or you can show all the goodness that now you're interested you, in. You, you Basically, a simple toggle, show hide, no refresh, all in line. Um, you guys are really good at Ajax developers, aren't you? Yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> Some people say we do it, we go overboard, but. Uh, <laughs> So we're trying to tone it down a little bit. They're like, there are too many things flying around. <laughs> so, um, but you basically, all you have to do is go to start.com slash PDC, and you can see all the feeds that I'm subscribed to. And you basically add the URL manifest for a, a gadget that you're interested in. So one that I already have that's actually already added is, is a photo gadget that we built that basically uses Flickr. Um, I already have it in, so maybe I should just okay. delete it so that you can get the full experience. Um, and you just subscribe. So the XML, this is the manifest that essentially defines what are the different resources of the gadget. So just kind of a quick summary of what Scott had mentioned is we essentially separate presentation and behavior and data. So the manifest essentially brings in those two layers of data and uh, presentation together. And so this is what the manifest enables you to do, to figure out what are the different resources that I need. And as you can see, we're not even hosting the source files on start.com. 
So um, you just click subscribe and I then did. I did too. And you totally missed that, didn't you? Oh, that's you? okay. <laughs> uh, sure saw it in the okay, so, um, and it basically gets... So added. you don't have a place to go and do the drag and drop like you have with the Windows gadgets yet, right? Um, not yet. Okay. We... But you're, you're working on it. I, I know you guys will have it in we three are, days. We are. Drag and drop the gadgets Dra around the page. Though. Drag and... Well, so we have, yeah. we have a different paradigm. So we okay. have the directory that's essentially within our sidebar today. Okay. And that's all of your directory. But then, I mean, we have drag and drop everywhere, so... <laughs> Inside the web page, then, Yes, right? yes. Yeah, I'm, I was thinking of... Uh, uh, is so there a have, directory of gadgets yes, that you can pull up and yeah. then drag them into the stuff? Yes, yes. So there's two things we're doing for that. Actually, we had one feature that we just had to pull out because it had some side effects. But you can actually drag anything on the sidebar onto the main page. That's something yeah. we're adding back in very soon. And the other problem is, as you talked about with Sean, what are we going to do once you have hundreds of gadgets? That's something we need to address because that's that's our goal. We want developers to be able to have as many gadgets as they want and it, discovery is important so that is something we're working on right. probably not as nifty as what these guys have but now <laughs> now if I had a Windows Vista machine and mm -hmm. I had start.com up in right. the browser window would I be able to drag these gadgets from start.com and into my sidebar Drag and drop's a little bit tricky because of security, uh, okay. but from uh, from a user model perspective, Sanaz is, is brainstorming right now uh, with the, her team on uh, offering an option to just go ahead and pin the gadgets okay. uh, that you have on your Star.com homepage. So like weather, maybe the traffic map, uh, and being able to pin that directly into Sidebar. So at that point, the package would go ahead and download, the user would go through through acknowledging security rights, and then it'll go ahead and, and load in the Sidebar. Okay. And is there anything developers need to think about today to make that easier in the future as you guys update your systems? See, that's, I'd say that's probably the most beautiful part about it is that you can write it once and run it you know, either on the web or on the desktop because okay. we will support Atlas just like Sidebar will and you, you can write it for the web and it's easy as a drag and drop metaphor but it probably won't be drag and drop since it's not only security but it's also kind of confusing since we have drag and drop on the page so we're trying to figure out some cool UI paradigms for that but that's definitely, you know, we want to essentially make the line between the web and the desktop more transparent. You know, it's, it's all about services and users shouldn't really have to think about, oh, it's on my desktop and it's not really on the web. So we want to add that value. Of but clearly roaming. you guys are heading toward the Windows Vista sidebar being able to host DHTML gadgets. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so the gadgets I'm seeing today, like your little traffic cam oh, yeah. here, We'll be able to be put on the Windows exactly. Vista. Exactly. So, one of the cool things you'll also be able to do is, is, is have a step. I got my the tripod eye. here. <laughs> we're hitting David with the tripod here. Uh, no, I was, I was going to say one of the cool things that we're also going to support is uh, targeted presentation layer. So Sanaz mm -hmm. just talked about the beauty of separating out you know behaviors and application logic from the presentation layer. It's going to be possible for you to have you know a traffic cam here that maybe is a specific size, and then once you want to get to the 150 pixel width that we, that we you know, advise for, for sidebar gadgets. Uh, you can go ahead and, and stuff that in, inside the same gadget file. Now, are you locked to that pixel size for gadgets? Nope. Uh, actually, we're going to recommend 150 pixels uh, okay. for the sidebar. We're going to have a full design guideline uh, document and, and templates available for developers. Uh, but if you're uh, undocking from uh, from sidebar and just floating on the desktop, you can go ahead and, and resize like I, I did with the uh, uh, with the slideshow gadget. And I noticed the, the gadgets hang over the edge of the sidebar. Right. You so. know, that, that's that's an area we're taking a lot of feedback on right now. So okay. I encourage people to give us their feedback on, on both the curved design of the sidebar, uh, the behavior that we just described, uh, as well as the overhang. Uh, based upon what we saw at PDC, it was about 50-50, uh, you know, in terms of people who either liked the curved design or didn't. And the same thing with the overhang. Some people thought it was really cool and, and kind of edgy, uh, but no pun intended. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> oh, God, that was bad. <laughs> you should just move on now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's see some of these cool uh, web DHTML gadgets. That's so, 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 how many gadgets have people made since the PDC? Um, because you guys had the developer center. Over quite it. a few. So, so th we will be making. I would say we're we're gonna make some improvements to our developer center. Right now, we're not encouraging people to submit them because there's no place to showcase them. So, 
they email me a lot, or they email me, email the feedback alias. You don't sleep, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I see you yeah. on at two in the morning, too. So. <laughs> yeah, that's something I should work on. But uh, <laughs> um, they've been submitting quite a bit, and then we've gotten like five Flickr gadgets, different flavors of it, essentially the same thing. So I really want to essentially have a place for the developers to showcase here's what I have. So we have our forums coming up soon. We're going to have syndication for the list of gadgets and, and everything. So that's something we're going to work on because then the developers are going to be like, oh, you're working on a Flickr Jack gadget. Maybe I shouldn't work on another one or maybe we can work on making it cooler. Um, so th those are some improvements we're making, but we are very impressed by the numbers that we have seen so far and some really, really great ideas. That I'm going to show you some of them actually. Yeah, let's see. Um, so actually, one other thing that I also want to show you, Bef ever <laughs> since uh, ever since we have, uh, well, since our last interview, which was, I think, uh, right after the start.com slash three with the little puzzle, <laughs> yep. the infamous puzzle, we've had um, we've had three releases since then. So we've, we had a release right after that that was essentially a facelift, uh, getting rid of the puzzle, and just some quick feedback, and then we shipped on start.com. So no more slashes, no more puzzles. Just easy, easy so to get to. So you just go to, to start.com and you exactly. see your work, Exactly. Right? You just go there and it's right there. And you guys update every, how often do you update? We update um, almost on a weekly basis. Okay. Um, but we try to have significant releases within every four to six weeks. Okay. So we had, uh, within the past two weeks, we've had the developer release, which was for PDC, and then we shipped to 14 markets. So now you can have start in Japanese, Italian, a bunch of other languages that I somehow don't remember, even though I looked <laughs> at the markets every day. But so those are some of the things we've been working on. And some improvements that we have made on the site is how to make it a better, you know, our goal is to be a web aggregator. So it's how, how to be a better RSS ag aggregator first, because that's, that's basically one of our primary ways of aggregating the web. Um, so some features we've added is that we've added feed read on read. So now you can actually see it in the headlines. You know, I have five that I haven't read yet, or I want to see more headlines. So you can just easily plus minus. So we're all about, you know, very easy to use UI. That it's just brain dead simple and it's optimized for the most common experience. Um, so just some simple features that we've been adding. I actually don't don't remember how many features we've added since the last time. <laughs> a few but, dozen. Yeah. Oh, actually, one of the, the the things that is really cool is that we've added subscribe uh, from search. So let's say I search for what something. Oh, your sling box maybe. Um, <laughs> and uh, we can just look for feeds, and you can actually see feeds that include that. And you can subscribe to it right there. Wow. Um, so we find that paradigm extremely powerful because we see that as as the way for people to discover feeds. I mean, today some sites have a directory of feeds that's just not going to scale. The way that RSS is picking up, search is really the way to discover it. Yeah. Um, do you have OPML import? Yes, definitely. We do have OPML import. We have and export. Uh, I know you sent me some suggestion. <laughs> I haven't read it yet, but I know you had something about OPML. So you export as well? We do actually. So if I wanted to switch to Yahoo's page, I could go. export all my feeds. And I mean, I wouldn't Yahoo. recommend it, but you could. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely could. Um, and, and vice versa, right? Because <laughs> they yeah, have export too. That's, that's what I said reason. this morning. <laughs> they have export too, so you can import your we feeds. We have that. We start, actually like have that. It's a little bit hidden. If you click on Advanced, that's basically here. You click here to export, and it exports everything that's in your, essentially, your list of subscriptions. Got it. And you can import as well. Okay. Um, so that, that's the main way that most of our users are switching from blog lines to start or whatever other aggregator they use. Yeah. Is there a limit to how many you can import? Because I have uh, something like 1,380. You know, you'd be a great test. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go try it out. Because some of the aggregators, I think... Uh, I don't want to say it, but one of the aggregators only let me import a thousand feeds, and oh. that, that made me mad. <laughs> you know, I know you haven't switched to start yet, so well, I, I really want you to switch. <laughs> we'll go the extra mile. So. I'm waiting. It's uh, it's uh, getting close. All right, all right. <laughs> Every time I see you, I see something else cool here. So, <laughs> one more cool thing about start is let's say we're like 
oh, I don't know, wondering about what's going on in the news. The nano and the broken screens, maybe. Um, and you can go to the news tab, for example. Okay. Please. Um, there's a lot of news on that on today. Oh, yeah. so. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> you picked a hot, hot, hot. Yeah, I know. And yeah, if you so. add it to my page, now you're essentially subscribed to a search result. Ooh. So and this, where does that search result come from? This is driven by MSN Search. MSN Search or MSN News? Um, well, actually, the News tab specifically is driven by it, Moreover. Okay. Um, but you see the concept. It's be, and soon we will be hopefully using MSN Search. Uh, I'm sure they probably working on it. Yeah, they're um, working on a few things that we're not allowed to talk about yet. Okay, can you cut that? <laughs> no, 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 no you're, you're safe so far. You haven't okay, said any right. secret words yet. So. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> I interviewed them last week, so they okay. have a bunch of stuff coming out. But, uh, um, cool. So now you can subscribe to your news and be up to date every day about what's going on. So we find this paradigm to be really powerful. We want this to, to take this to the next level such that you can search to essentially anything. You can search to something you want to shop for, something that on an article, whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's that. So and we have I'm to not... talk later because I see like three get new gadgets there that I, I want. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Switch over to Star.com as my homepage. Yay. So... And, and I'm not stuck with MSN Search, right? I could use any of the blog search engines out there that have an RSS feed to subscribe to, right? Well, we use um, Search's feed colon for discovery. Ah, okay. um, that said, Scott Isaacs has actually built a gadget that uses Feedster, which I will show you maybe interested in, that uses Feedster to, you know, find blogs and whatnot. Oh, yeah. Um, cool. So I'll show you some of the gadgets that have been built. Okay. Um, one gadget that was built, this was built in 30 minutes by Steve Ryder. I mean, he's a genius, but, you know, maybe it'll take three times as much for someone else. Um, and it's just a simple Flickr um, gadget. So you basically pass in a tag. Yep. And it displays all photos, you know, this is somebody probably staying at the standard at PDC, um, that were, or somebody that liked their room, I guess, <laughs> um, that all the photos that are tagged with PDC05 on Flickr. Yep. Um, and as you can see, extremely easy to use, very fast. Um, we were actually using that tag on the on the uh, plasma screens at the PDC. Right, right. We were pulling photos yep. off of the same feed to display <laughs> on our big screens. Like we could even try all that food. <laughs> oh, there was lots of food. There was so much food. Um, here, right here, we have uh, a traffic gadget. This was uh, built by one of our product managers for for a demo, and this is right, you know, Microsoft on 51st and 405. You can see the traffic. There's actually a cooler one that he built. Unfortunately, I can't demo it right now. That it gives you the. Um, the aerial view with the congestions and whatnot, yep. you know, the color, I don't know if there's a term for it, but you know what I'm talking about. I, my smartphone has yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. That. And, and you can actually swap between the type of views you want and you can select a location as well. Yeah. Um, Seattle has traffic cams uh, uh, over exactly. most of our freeways. So. Right, so you can just pull it in right on start and get everything you want. And so he built that component to be to use the DOT's web service. Yes, and yes. And just pull down photos exactly, and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. We have a really cool virtual earth gadget that I try to get a hold of Steve Lombardi to, to demo it. Unfortunately, we don't have it yet, but we're going to ship it soon. Okay. Um, there's another version of the traffic. Actually, I guess this is the one I was talking about. Um, but we have one that's actually the combo of this one and that one, and you can swap between the two and you can pick your location. Got it. Um, again, like it just goes to show how easy it is to build whatever you want. We have we've had media player versions. Um, you know, it's beyond just data. That's what we want to show our users. Um, one other one that I want to show that's, that's anything you can display on a web page, you could display exactly, it. exactly. Um, the last one I would show is, well, I do have the Feedster search right there, is this was built again by another, you know, developer. It's just a little word game um, that every day he has a, essentially a word of the day and, you know, the 3x3 three three grid and you can find 35 words in it. I'm, I'm not very good at it. I try it every day. I get to up to like 20 words and then I'm stuck. Huh. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's just like, you know, a cute way of finding words and and seeing if it's in the grid or not. Right. Um, some one one other feature I would show. This was actually built by uh, Scott Isaacs. Um, so 
This is a, a themer. So we got a ton of complaints once we shipped Start.com that people were like, oh my god, what's with the font? Because we went to Ariel from Verdana. And and then we're like, you know, we're never going to be able to satisfy everyone. And, yeah. and Scott is like, the next day, he emails me and he's like, well, I have a new gadget for, you know, controlling your entire look and feel. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> so now, now you can make uh, every those four guys who want Comic Sans as their, <laughs> as their font exactly. of choice. Exactly. <laughs> you want Courier New, if you want Tomorrow. Believe me, there's four out there. <laughs> If you know, and it's it's so. I mean, this was kind of a geeky way. I would say we would we would add a more usable, you know, average Joe can use a type of UI on top of it. But hey, if you want Comic Sans as your font, you have to <laughs> just deal with it. Yeah. Um, but to show you how fast it is, so let's say I, I want to change the color of this search bar. Yeah. And whoops, where did I go? Um, and I say like black, and and apply. Yep. It's all in line, like very fast. You don't have to go to the traditional. I mean, we're trying to kind of redefine the traditional web page of edit, save mode. It's just one step. I now, get what I want. Now, how do you do that without refreshing the web page? It's all Ajax. It's all all, Ajax. all thanks to Scott, thanks to Atlas, all that. HTML. <laughs> Exactly. So DHTML and that's really neat because yeah. that gives you an idea of what the power of these gadgets that could be. Exactly. running in your page, you don't necessarily need to wait for the user to refresh, you can oh, no. make things live. We already have, we actually have auto refresh on our feeds now, so that was again one of our top requested features, like, you know, I want to know when a feed is updated without having to refresh the page, and that's easy to do, we, we have that enabled today, so, wow. yeah. So cool. They might put Windows out of business or something. <laughs> <laughs> We're part of Windows. Oh, yeah, that's true. You're, you're part are. of our team now. We're Thank God. <laughs> well, thanks. Well, this is thank cool you. stuff. Thank and you. Uh, looking forward to a lot more web, web gadgets. Awesome. So. Well, we have a really good Now, what do you call soon. these? Are, are they called web gadgets or DHTML gadgets? You know, gadgets the name or? has gone through many different versions. Um, they started out as uh, Startlets. Um, they weren't all that popular, but uh, <laughs> uh, initially Scott calls them bindings, uh, and then we're like, oh, you know, my mom doesn't really get that, and I went to Startlets. My mom probably didn't really get that either, and now we're at gadgets, which, um, and you know, it's web gadgets and desktop gadgets, and hopefully people like that name. Well, it makes sense better. too because the platforms yeah. have come together. Exactly. So it's exactly. you know, from that perspective. Now you, know, you can write once and run it on the desktop or on the web. Very cool. Well, thanks for uh, taking some time and showing us the Thank you. world. Of, Thank you. Is there anything else that we need to know for right now? Uh, visit MicrosoftGadgets.com. Oh yeah. MicrosoftGadgets.com. Uh, yeah, it, it, and Sanas has and some ways to right? develop resources. What? Now you can do these right now. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes, right? you yeah. Can. So you don't need to wait for beta two of Windows Vista to start. That's right. Gadgets. So around beta two, we're going to have uh, have our, our gadgets uh, in sidebar available. Is it going to be here by Christmas? Uh, it, around, around. The <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one person asked that. <laughs> I know some folks that were building eyes. Is Santa going to have uh, a present for me? You know, <laughs> schedules, uh, schedules holding fast. So we're, uh, mm -hmm. as you can see, moving fast and, and nimbly. So we're, we're pretty excited about that. Very cool. Well, thank you very much, cool. and uh, thanks for showing us this stuff. Thanks.